What's up wizards? We're going to do a different type of video today. For those who don't know, I just had a baby and this means that I am preciously low on time, but I actually do a lot of content on other platforms that has kind of been queued up over time and it's kind of something that's pretty easy for me to do. So I want to do a little bit more content reuse across my stuff. I do three tips every week on Twitter and LinkedIn and Instagram, even though I've only got like 600 followers on Insta. These tips tend to go a little bit nuts and so I wanted to show them to you so that you don't miss out. So let's get started with my January TypeScript tips. This first one, January 29th, got about 900 likes. We are talking about the difference between React node and element in React. Here we have react.react node and jsx.element. You can also replace jsx.element with react element if you want to. It kind of works the same. They're aliases for each other. Now, the difference is between them that react node represents anything that React can render, whereas jsx.element only represents JSX. This is really, really important because if you're annotating children, you actually want the user to be able to pass in, let's say, number or undefined or strings or things like this, anything that technically React can render. Whereas JSX.Element or React.ReactElement can only represent JSX. I actually made some PRs to the React repo to actually add some comments into these so you can actually hover over them and see what they do. It's kind of crazy to me that no one has added JS.Comments to the React repo yet. Okay, next up I was talking about the using keyword and how really awesome it is for mocking unit tests. Unit tests, if you do any mocks in them, and if those mocks are reusable, or let's say you're changing some global state, you're going to need to use before each and after each. But now that we have using, which is like a new variable annotation or a new way of declaring a variable, basically what this can do is it can do um, all sorts of disposal for you. So let's say that you want to access a file here or access like a WebSocket. You would connect to the WebSocket in this little zone there. Then inside the symbol.dispose function, you would basically dispose of that WebSocket, kind of cancel the connection inside here. And then you would just say using mock equals mock something. And then when you leave this scope, it automatically gets disposed. So this is different from normal GC, normal garbage collection, right? It's not just disposing of the variable, it's actually calling a function in which you can do stuff. So let's say dispose of a database connection, dispose of a file handle, things like that. People love this stuff. This got uh, 1.7k likes on Twitter, which is fairly nuts. And this is so cool for actually unit testing, right? Because one of the main problems I have with unit testing is the before each after each thing means that your tests are not very portable from file to file. You have all of these kind of implicit dependencies based on where the before each and after each is, which describe block you're in and all of that crazy crap. And using using just means you can get away from all that and have your test be something that you can move around file by file. You know that the thing that you're looking at inside the test is all you need to care about. There's nothing else inside the file that matters. It is great. This is not one of my tips, but it did go absolutely nuts. This 1.9K here for Carl Shevlin, perhaps his favorite TypeScript tip, literally type to do equals any. This means that you can basically alias the type of any to to do. And it means that if you're doing a migration, you can basically just mark it as to do. So we have a function, let's say, and that function just takes in a couple of parameters and you mark them as to do. You can even put this inside like a .d.ts file so it goes global across your application. So you basically just have an alias for any here that you can find and replace for, which is just so nice. You can even track the number of them inside your application. It's really, really cool, this tip, actually. Okay, this is a long one. This was basically about generic functions here, and it got 1K likes, so people seem to like this one. So I noticed that someone, uh, Sunil Pai, uh, the guy behind um, Party Kit, I think he worked on the React team for a while, he posted this function called retry here. And this function basically takes in a function that returns a promise any here and a number of retries. Then it retries that function again and again and again. But you notice that if we do retry promise.resolve hello, we're expecting this string here is going to be the value inside the promise.resolve. It's going to be string here. But actually, because we're using promise any here, it results just in any. Now, the simplest way you can just change this, this is such a nice little change, is just to add a type parameter onto that retry. So you just say retry 
Okay, I've added T here, and then instead of promise any, you're saying promise T, and then it means that the type that you get back is inferred based on the type of the promise. I think this one was popular because it's just such a clear, beautiful use case for generics. You just get to replace an any with an actual bit of type inference inside your application for just hardly any characters. So, so nice. Next up, we got a tip about const type parameters that I do have a video on, actually. This one got 1.4K likes. This is a really nice, um, example, I think. We have a function here called use statuses. Again, I'm using declare just so I don't have to like show the implementation. And if we look at this, we have use statuses loading an idle here. And the loading status that we're getting back is string. This is actually not what we want. We want it to be inferred as the literal loading or idle here. And the way we can do that is we can add a const before this t here. And you see here, const t, just there, that means that the thing that gets inferred in gets inferred as narrowly as possible. This is a const type parameter. It was added in, oh, I can't remember when it was added, but um, uh, the 5 or 5.1 or something, but very recently. And this means now that you just get to have this really simple type annotation that you add and just infer it as narrowly as possible. This is really good for arrays, really good for compl complex config objects that you want to pass in. And in general, if you find yourself going, oh, I, I probably need to ask my users to pass the thing in as, as const, you can use const type parameters instead. It is so, so cool. Let's jump into the IDE for this one. This one got 1.4K likes. This is a new feature that's coming out in TypeScript 5.4, which is they are implementing a global type called no infer. I've implemented it myself here. This is a community solution that has been going around for ages, and let's see how it works. Let's say we have a create FSM function here. This create FSM function takes in a type parameter of T state. And what it's doing here is when you call create FSM, it's basically capturing all of the possible states that your finite state machine can be in. Finite state machine has a certain number of states and we want to select one of those states as the initial here. But this is behaving really weirdly because initial we should only be allowed to select an initial that's actually in our state's array here. So not allowed should not be allowed. It should either be open or closed. And if we look in create FSM here, it's actually inferring not allowed or open or closed as the possible members of our FSM. So what we want to do is we want to somehow wrap this T state here and say initial is not supposed to be an inference candidate. It's not supposed to be a site of inference. We want to say, OK, initial, just don't infer from here. And we can do that with no infer. Bam. And now look at this. If we look at create FSM, it's now inferring as open or closed here. And initial can only be open or closed. If we add another one here, like uh, whatever, then initial can be open or closed or whatever. And we're getting a proper error there. So this is a really cool solution to a tricky problem. And it sort of blows my mind that TypeScript has this stuff under the hood, that really it's trying to select all of the different inference candidates for you when you have a function where there's multiple possibilities for what you could be inferring. And no infer solves that problem. So that's coming out in TypeScript 5.4. 1.2k likes for this. This is a classic tip. Type of array number. What we've got here is a const roles array here, which has user, admin, and super admin, and we're declaring them as const. What we can do here is we kind of want to extract the type of user, admin, and super admin here. And so we can try doing just a type of here, but that actually just gives us the type of the array. We can then take that and say, okay, type of roles index into it with either user or admin or super admin indexing via the number. But this is pretty verbose, won't adapt if we add more roles to this array. We kind of just want to, in one fell swoop, say, let's grab all of the members of this array, stick them in a type as a union. And the way you do that is with this number annotation here. Conceptually, you can think of this as like zero or one or two, basically condensing down and just say, index into this with anything that could be accessed via a number. So in the case of a read-only array like this, that means grabbing all of the members. An extremely bloody useful tip, no matter how you look at it. 1.2K people agreed. And finally, starting off the year with a bang, element ref. So freaking useful for finding relevant types for use ref in React. I don't know if people were just nuts coming off of Christmas, but this got 2.4K likes. This is a really, really nice solution to a tricky problem in React, which is it's often hard to find the type 
types for the refs you're using. And with element ref, you can basically just pass in like the tag name of the thing you want, and you get back the right ref to pass in to use ref. You can also as well, hot tip, you can pass in random components into this. So if you have like a select component coming from react select, you can basically just say element ref type of select and pass it in there. And that means you just get back the right ref for the thing that you want. It is pretty cool actually, and it's not too expensive for TypeScript to work with either. I think that this is just like a better way to grab the refs for anything you need, and that's probably why a ton of people liked it. So there we go, friends. That was my January TypeScript tips. Hopefully you found something in there that you didn't know before, or found something that you sort of knew before but was clarified a bit. If you like this, then give it a like and subscribe, and comment below if you want to see more of these. I actually really like doing this. This was quite a fun, easy video for me to film, especially with my now more compressed time schedule. There will be a little face somewhere. I, I can never get left and right right here, but there will be a face somewhere, and there will be a little video that you can watch too. Please do subscribe, and please do check out all of my stuff on TotalTypeScript.com as well. There is more stuff coming in the pipeline this year. Um, I was writing a book all of last year, which will be coming out sometime this year. I can't wait to show you all that and all of the new stuff that we've got coming out on the channel. And do follow me on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok as well, which I now am on too for my sins. So anyway, I will see you very soon.